Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today, the show comes to you from Northampton. We're here at the famous cricket ground. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 200. Shall I put more down? If I think it's worth a gamble, I'm going to say, go on, take a chance. Go to auction. You might get a little bit more money there. 150. There's already a large crowd of people here. They want to walk away with the real deal. Now let's head straight into the dealer's den. And why don't we start with a little innocent flirting? Can we just say what a sexy name Maxine is? <laughs> Thank you. It does. It conjures up real sexy name. Thank you. Lovely. Still very nice not to meet. bad either. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think, well, I do know what it is, but I'll, I'll let you tell us what it is. It's a 1950s um, Japanese sea fishing float. Right. With and the original... Rope work. Rope work. What is interesting about it is this logo that's imprinted or embossed on there, yeah. which is obviously the glass blower or the artist. So that's the um, double F. It's called the double F... Um, what is, can separate... you say that in Japanese? No. <laughs> okay. It's the double F um, separate ceiling. These were, all I know is they were very popular as an interior decorative piece in the 60s, funny enough. Um, but a lot of them that you see are much thicker and much greener and, and thicker ropes and things like that. How long have you had it? Um, about three years. Oh, not long then? No, not long. a family friend gave it me because I thought it would look nice in my bathroom. But then when I started to research it, I thought, no, it's more it's interesting. It's a bit more interesting than yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it is quite interesting. Why have you bought it along to sell it? You obviously know a bit about it, so you quite like um, it. Well, it's not sentimental, and my bathroom's too small, so I just thought I'd bring it along and see if you was interested. <laughs> I'd better try and buy it, haven't I? OK, thank you. 50 pound. Um, not really. Not really? No, not really. £60. Does that float your boat? Um, get in there, yeah. Get in there? Get in there. Maybe another one. Another one? It would look lovely in your bathroom. Oh, I don't have a bathroom, you know. Oh. Yeah, I do, actually. I must <laughs> get the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'll put another tenner down. I'll make it 70 quid. There you go. I must have a tenner somewhere. And that's purely because it's got that mark on it, which I find quite interesting. You won't go to 80? Definitely I, not. I'd really like to give you 50 for it. But I've got 70 on the table now. OK. Is that a deal? That's a deal. We have a deal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think Stuart was caught hook, line and sinker by Maxine. My name is Alison. A strange object is sitting on Alison's table, a commemorative plaque of Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert. And this is your little portrait of Albert. I think it was probably um, produced after his death because yeah. they've blacked it. It's a sort of cameo of him, isn't it, really? Yeah, so are you. Yeah, but his crest. Yeah, with the Royal Coat of Arms. Mm. Mm. So how did you come by it? Years ago at an antique fair. OK, and why did you buy it? What attracted you? It's quirky. It's something different. And so you've hung it in your home, have you? Yeah, we've had it for about three years and just decided, right, time's right to move it. OK. So I like to change the room around, so... <laughs> right, well, cash on the table time. OK, well, there's 20. 30. Okay. Um, well, I sort of feel. Um, I mean, these pieces are quirky, and they can either go for money or they can sort of fall flat on their faces. I like this. I think it's very original. Let me tell you what our independent values say. They say sixty to eighty. Thirty pounds is on the table. I think I'd like to see double that. Otherwise, I would say give it a go in auction. 
So where are wow. we? Wow. This isn't nice enough quality for me to get all excited about, I'm afraid. Um, the finish on it and the profile and the material that's been used doesn't float my boat. So I feel fairly much at my limit at the 30. Would you go to 40? No. No? No, I'm sorry I wouldn't. No, I'll go to auction. Go to auction? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Positive. Okay, darling. Thank Thanks you. Thank you very much. Let's head over to the sale room, where that bust is hopefully in the safe hands of our auctioneer, Ben Shuler. 150. I've got Sonia here, who was with us on the dealer's day, but we have another young lady here who we haven't seen before, and you're Lisa. I am, yeah. Now, Lisa, what's the relationship here with Sonia? I'm a daughter-in-law. OK, fine. So you've come along today for a bit of moral support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Where did you acquire this framed memento from? Um, from an antique fair for ten pound. Ten quid. Yeah. Even at thirty pounds, the offer from Alison Chapman, that showed a profit. But you thought it's worth more. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's worth a bit more than thirty pounds, and it's coming up now. Is it going to make it? Well, let's find out. Seventy-one A now is the brass cameo in the uh, mahogany case. Nice one there for you this time. Would it be for that? Can I have seventy, eighty pounds? Oh, thirty bit, thirty, oh, thirty-two, five, eight, forty-two. Five, eight, fifty. Fifty pound with a fifty pound with a fifty pound with a fifty pound. Fifty-five. At fifty-five with a fifty-five with a fifty-five with a fifty-five with a fifty-five. At fifty-five pound with a fifty-five pound with a fifty-five. We work together, we're not even talking. At fifty-five pound, I down away done at fifty-five. Okay, fifty-five pounds. Take off five pound fifty, just under fifty quid. So it's just under fifty pounds. First of all, let me ask you, Lisa. Are you happy with that? Yeah, that's not too bad, is good it? Good enough price? a good day and, yeah, good okay. price. And what do you think, Sonia? Are you pleased with the return on your money? Yeah, it's a lot better on the day. OK. That was a good lot, wasn't it? Good it one. did well under the gavel. Going home with 50 quid, or just short of 50 pounds, that was the real deal. Well, that was one bust which is now bursting with pride. Now, Corrie's got two second-hand cups that could provide a fistful of cash. I'm Corrie, I'm your dealer today. Well, they're actually my sons. Um, he's asked me to bring them along today. OK. How did he come by them? Did he win well, them? Well, no. Um, he used to work in a recycling centre. And he was working one day, and these happened to be in the tip, in the rubbish bin. In the rubbish bin. In now, rubbish I can bin. see from here, they've got a hallmark, both of them. So they're silver, solid silver. Mm -hmm. And when did he realise what he'd bought, um, what he'd found? Sorry. He, when he got them, he um, decided to clean them because they were really obviously they were like black, and that's when he thought that he thought well, he thought two of them were silver. They were originally five cups, but um, three of them were just silver plated. But you've got to give them full marks for actually fishing them out and mm. spotting them, and fishing them out and yeah. bringing them home and cleaning them, mm. because these have been so heavily inscribed as cups, as trophies, they're not worth anything. Because you can't take that inscription off and reuse them. Mm -hmm. Same goes for that one. Right. So basically what you're looking at is the value in the metal, the scrap silver. And at the moment, silver is high, very high. And I believe you've had them weighed. I have, yes. And they came out at? 19 ounces. 19 ounces. So you've got a lot of silver. They're solid silver. So let's see what we can put on the table. <laughs> Good start. It Let's is. Keep going. So you got 150. 200. 250. 300. 320. How do you feel about that, Trish and Rachel? Mm, that's good. I think we could I'll take it. Mm, you're not supposed to take the first offer, though, are you? I suppose. Squeeze a little bit more. Yeah. Well, if I put five pounds down as a sweetener for you ladies, buy you a cup of coffee, would we have a deal? That's a good deal. Yeah. Think you'll be happy with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 325 on the table and we have a deal. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Also coming up, the Duke flies into a deal. We there, we there, soldier. <laughs> What's got him so excited? The right man with the right house that's looking for a substantial knocker. Will this knocker roll? Find out in a moment. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northamptonshire County Cricket Club. How's that for a cue? And all waiting for the real deal. Let's hope Marilyn won't get stumped by our Henry. Marilyn, good to see you. Um, what do you know of its history and its origins? Well, I know it's a circuit of 1900. Yeah. And it belonged to an auntie of mine um, who's now passed on. Right. Is it something you've just had tucked away at the back of a cupboard or...? No, I've had it for about seven years. Right. And um, I had it on display at home because yeah. I have a disabled son, Peter, who is autistic. Right. And we thought it would be nice to put the money towards a holiday to take him away with us. What a fantastic yes. reason. Absolutely yes. lovely. So what we need to do, we need to have a look at what we've actually got here. It does date to about 1900, and it's typically what we know as Art Nouveau. But what we need to see is who made it, and hopefully on the bottom, it'll tell us. Right. Yep, absolutely what I thought it would be. This is a firm, it's an Austrian firm called WMF. Now, the problem with WMF is that the name is so long, I can't pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. OK. But they're a very, very, very good firm. Also, as we've got this little highlighted um, brass ringlets here on the side of the of the handle which controls obviously the lid opening and closing yes and it's in remarkably good condition and the best part about this is that you've not done the silly thing and polished it no okay where do we want to start i think we're going to go 20 40 60 80 100, 120, 125. How about that? No, I'm sorry. No. Oh dear. No, I'm sorry. Oh dear. I'm not doing very well with this, am I? Well, let's take this one away and we'll go 140, 160, and. 170. That's near, near on. Near on. But I'll have the figure in my head, yes. OK. Well, I think what I'll do, let's put another 10 in, £180. I think any more than that, and I think I'm probably out of the running. We have a deal. Fantastic. Marilyn, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> That was a cracking price, and Marilyn's a happy lady. Sitting on Corrie's table is something remarkable, a delicate antiquity that survived for thousands of years. And you're the proud owner of this wonderful little glass vessel. I am. So can you tell me how you came by it? Actually, my husband bought it um, over 30 years ago, and it was in a job lot at an auction sale. The first thing that strikes me about it is the wonderful colour. Right. It's this really, really delicate, sort of lemony yellow. Uh -huh. But there's a wonderful iridescence to it. Yeah. And if you look at the handles here, they're, they're twisted. Right. They're, they're almost like a spun glass, aren't they? Yes. OK, I'm going to lift it up. And it's really, really light. Mm. The thing about this kind of iridescent glass is you're hoping it's Roman. That's right. But a lot of it was made in the 19th century as souvenirs. Right. And one of the things that would distinguish it is it's so light. Right. So that leads me to think this is a genuine article. Oh, right. So that would put this piece of glass at nearly 2,000 years old, or say anything from 1600 yeah. to 2,400 years yeah. old. OK, I'm, I'm going to put some money on the table and see how okay. far we get. Right up. 20, 40, 60, 80. Not smiling. No. <laughs> it's 100 on the table. So I'm going to guess another 20. How would you feel about 120? 
And here comes David to give you a hand. £120 on the table, Elaine. Uh -huh. Now, our independent valuer and the auctioneer, they're both around 150 to 180 So I think 120 is a reasonable offer, but I'd like to think it was probably worth... 160, 170, somewhere around there. Otherwise, I think it could impress someone in the auction. Okay. I'd like to put some more money on the table okay. and see how you feel. Okay. 140, 160 on the table. Right. Would we have a deal at 160? Um, no. 180. That's 200 in the sale room. Do we have a deal? Um, another ten. Another ten. I knew you were going to say <laughs> that. Can I have a ten ready? Okay. <laughs> is, it, is it a deal? It is. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Good. <laughs> It looks like David's gone Roman too. He's roamed across to see our auctioneer Ben about a lion. The Duke always says the antiques game is all about opinions. Well, opinions come thick and fast in this deal. And none of them agree. You bought a long a door knocker, is it? I think it's classed as a door pull. A um, door pull. Or door pull stroke door knocker. Decided it's time to get rid of it. It's time to um, go. I think I'll move it on. Um, maybe, um, probably, go in, just collect something else. Probably, I'm just a sort of obsessive collector. Okay. So, okay. well, I like metalwork. They send yeah. it to the right person. And and the best thing about door knockers, which I thought it might be at first glance, yeah. is uh, the lions or the lion rings. Is the is the accepted? Everyone wants a lion's door knocker yeah. on a big Georgian house. Personally, I don't believe it's a door knocker. Right. I think it's actually uh, an embellishment of a big architectural urn. Right. So it would look to be a pair of handles on a yeah. big urn, and I'm talking a big urn, the size of this table maybe. Oh, uh, right. Um, and I think it's probably, having looked at the back of it, I feel it's probably 20th century. I don't know how, mm. how you bought it on date. They, they actually listed it as 18th century. Mm. I think it's 1940s, mm. 1950s. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben, I could say, Knock, knock, who's there? Uh, but what we've got here is a door knocker, uh, hardware for a door, but what a door. It is bronze, there is some gilding applied to it. What do you think about it? Well, we put an estimate 150 to 2 at auction, and I think it's more likely Victorian, mid Victorian, but it is a nice piece. Our independent valuers are saying three to four hundred pounds. My feelings are. It's worth the top end of the estimate, the 400 quid. Uh, whether we can find a buyer in your sale room on the day, I don't know. The question is, how will Stuart see it? Is he going to buy it? Let's find out. I love it, but it's not what I want it to be. I want right. it to be a door knocker, yes, a door pull. You bought it here to sell it, so I'll, I'll have a go at buying it, let's see. 20. 40, 60 pounds. If it had been a knocker of the age mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, I'd have been quite happy to pay two or three hundred pounds for it. Mm -hmm. But 60 pounds for my bid. Your eyes are lighting up. We, we there, <laughs> we there, soldier. <laughs> now, I heard what our dealer says. Now, this is really right up Stuart Street in some ways, but your feeling is that probably came off an urn or something. I say to you, no, 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 no. That was on the door of a very substantial house. Let's get to the sale room. Let's see if we can find that elusive buyer that has the magnificent house that's looking for a statement to go on his door. That's it. Well, there you go. David said it all, mm. isn't he? Yes. That's how David feels about it. Mm. You've got to take it to auction, haven't you? Yes. You've yeah. got to go to auction. Yeah, I'll take David's advice yeah, and yeah. take it through the auctions. Yeah. Twenty-six, sir. Thank you. Thirty bit, thirty got thirty. Well, bit, 30 the lion got 30. has strutted into the sale room, still with no agreement on its age. But let's hope it will roar under the hammer. Five. You won't have seen Dion before because it was your brother John that came to the dealer's day. Mm -hmm. 
he can't make it today. No. So you're here in his place. Now on the dealer's day, John brought along a super door knocker of a lion's head. Why is he parting with it, do you think? I don't know. He likes to buy and sell and wheel and deal a little I bit, think, I think. So. Yeah. Bit of a wheel and dealer. <laughs> yes. OK. Well, I thought it was a nice thing when I saw it. And Stuart, I think, who is normally a very strong uh, dealer and a very strong bidder, I think he underestimated this at 60 quid. The reserve is £200. Is it going to make it? Have we got anyone in the room who's enthusiastic enough? I think it's wonderful. So it's coming up now. Here we go. There we are then, an impressive one for you there this time. Impressive one there, would it be? Can I get, what, uh, 250? 200 and get on. 150, is it somewhere? Well, we're going to be then this time. We're going to start me. We're going to get 100 bid. Oh, 100 pound, but at 100 pound come a bit. 110, 110, where are we, sir? 120, 120, 130, 140. No, 140 bid at 140, got at 140 bid at 140, got at 140. And we're going to hear this time anybody else want to bid here. It's 140 I've got anywhere else. 140 it is, looking for the last time this time. I move away this time at 140. OK, the gamble's gone down 140 pounds. Bad news, really, because I think it was a great lot. It got up to 140, but it didn't get to the reserve of 200. What do you think? Will he be disappointed? I think he will be disappointed, yes, yes. But he's a wheeler and dealer. He'll <laughs> bounce back. He'll find another home That's for right. it. find another buyer. <laughs> I'm afraid it'll be knocking on another door somewhere else, but nevertheless, I still think it's a great thing. Coming up, is the Duke on a lookout for some fancy footwear? Suits you, sir. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northamptonshire County Cricket Club. Hello, I'm Henry. Hello, Henry. I'm Vera. Very nice to see you. Um, well, what we have here, we have a lovely little silver basket. Was it given to you? No, I actually got it from a recycling centre. A recycling centre? Yes. Fantastic. I never have any luck like that at all. It's a sugar basket, very, very lovely quality. Um, it's got a blue glass liner here, yes. which I'm glad to see the liner is in really good condition. I love this pierced decoration around the outside. And we've got the marks here on the front um, for Birmingham, and we've got uh, a date letter of Q, which would date it to 1915. It's in lovely condition, absolutely mint. I love it. So, question is, What's it worth? Mm, that's the I question. Think that is the question. OK. I'm going to offer you 20, 40, 60 pounds. How does that seem? OK, are we a long way away? Yes. OK. It's nice enough that I think I'm going to offer you 80, 100, OK, 120, 140. How does that seem? Mm -hmm. Oh, what the heck. 150 is my final offer to you. Fair enough, then I'll accept. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Vera. You. By the way, how much did it cost you? A pound. A pound? A pound. I think you've made a lot more profit than I'm going to make on I it. I think so. <laughs> I think is right, but we'll see if Henry can do better later in the show. Now, the Duke is known as a bit of a dapper dresser, but can he compete with this fancy footwear? I've got Rebecca Shawcroft here. Now, Rebecca, you're in charge of the shoe collection at the Northampton Museum, that's right, isn't that it? That is, yes. And Northampton has this strong um, attachment, really, or association to the shoe industry. Why is that? Well, really, I mean, we can go right back to the 12th century. I mean, shoes have been made in Northampton for hundreds of years. 12th century? Yes. Amazing. It, it is amazing. And really, at the height in the 19th century, I mean, Northampton, the town centre, there were 169 shoe factories making shoes for the UK and obviously all over the world. Let's just have a look at some of these fascinating items. I mean, these, look at them. They're extraordinary, aren't they? Well, it's pretty obvious to me what they are. Is it obvious to you? Come on, tell them what these are. 
They're, well, they're clown shoes uh, worn by the whimsical walker in the 1860s, 1870s. And he also did dancing in them. They have a wooden sole. Um, and he used to dance as well in his, in his very long-toed shoes. OK, this one seems to me, I know this one, 1970s glam rock, <laughs> is it? It's 1900, <laughs> and it's really to show off the shoemaker's skill, the great detail involved and the little stitching. And, and again, shoemakers just love to show off their skills, and this is just an example with all the flags on it um, to show that. OK. This looks like a normal boot, but that was issued to flyers in the Second World War, to pilots and air crew. And can you demonstrate how it was used and what it was for? Yes, I mean, it's called the escape boot from 1944. And basically, in the sheepskin lining, there is a little pocket for a penknife. And once shot down it's over enemy territory, you would be pretty obvious wearing a pair of boots like this. So they used to take the pen knife and then cut the leg part of the boot off. Amazing. And then you would be left with just an ordinary Oxford shoe. And so hopefully you wouldn't be discovered um, across enemy lines. How many items are in the museum in the entire collection? We have 13,000 shoes. <laughs> And we have uh, everything to do with shoes they're making, they're selling. So the whole collection is probably about 75,000 items. OK. Is it on view to the public? Yes. OK. And we're okay. in the centre of Northampton, so it really is a must visit, you know, for everyone. I'm going to say it's a fascinating collection and one you need to check out. But just before you go, I want you to check out this <laughs> little beauty. I'll cover up the maker's <laughs> name. What do you think about that Bobby Dazzler? <laughs> it is a Bobby Dazzler. It's just a shame it's not made in Northampton. <laughs> That's the real deal. As we're at Northamptonshire County Cricket Club today, what could be more appropriate than the bat that's on Alison's table? My name is Alison. Hello. Barbie. Barbie? Yes. What a great name. <laughs> I different. wish I could say I was Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie and Cindy. But it is really Barbara yeah. and after the Beach Boys. But... So we'd fight over Ken, yeah. wouldn't we? <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> I think you'd probably win. <laughs> so this is your um, cricket bat. Yes. Well, what's a Barbie girl like you doing with a cricket bat? Well, it's um, passed down from my mother-in-law. Um, who's moved into a bungalow and she's sort of passed bits on. But it is actually from uh, Alan Lamb. Um, he was the captain of the Northampton Cricket Ground um, oh. team. And they actually played with this bat um, for this match, won the match, and then the whole team signed it. Right, so we've got a bit of sports memorabilia. Yes. A bit of life memorabilia. Yeah and a little piece of Northamptonshire in this bat, haven't we? Yes. OK, well, i better get money out so that we can see what we're going to do with this. Um, it's a shot in the dark. <laughs> I haven't a clue, right. really. 20 quid. You don't feel about 20 no. <laughs> Oh, dear. OK. Uh, 30 pounds. How do we feel about that? No. No, I have to be honest with you, if you ask me what I would do with it, I really would put it to auction. Right. So, since £30 doesn't seem to grab you, do you think you might rather go to auction? Yeah, I'd probably go to auction if you're offering 30 I am. Yeah. I'm offering 30 Right. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank and you. I hope you do really well with your bat. Cheers, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. That's all right. Thank you. Well, Barbie was left stumped by Alison's offer. Will she have a better innings at the auction? What did you think about the £30 offer? Um, the £30 offer was OK, but I do think that maybe if it went to auction, maybe there'd be somebody who had interest within the cricket okay. who would probably bid more. OK, local auction house within the area. Yeah. One would presume maybe there is a local cricket fan here. I think the offer from Alison was realistic at 30 quid. Yeah. Is it going to make more than that? Well, we hope so. The cricket bat for you this time then. Nice little lot there, signed as well. Can I have 30 pounds? 30, 20, 
20 get on, 10 bid, 10 out yeah. 10, 10, low start there. Low start, 10 pounds. 10 only 10 bid, 12, at 12, 15, at 18, at 20. At I 20, think that's 22, no money, especially in the local area. Yeah. At 25 pound, all out this way, 25 pound on my right. I sell it this time then, last look around at 25. Okay, 25 pounds, there's 10% commission, that's about 2 pound 50 or something to come yeah. off, so you're going to have just over 22 pounds to come back. Yeah. How happy or unhappy are you? I've had a good day and I've met you and, yeah, it's been fine. See, happy with the £22 something or other? Not a bad score, that. <laughs> Coming up, some dinky toys attract big cash. 280 300 The Duke thinks they'll drive off with even more. I think it's over £500. I think it could be six. And it would not surprise me if it's more. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We've had a great day at the Northamptonshire County Cricket Club, but so far no one struck a big winning score. Will a Toy Story give us a happy ending? Well, we will all see what they are, can't we? <laughs> and I think they're not your boyhood collections, are they? Or, or no. ch childhood <laughs> collections? No. no they they belong to your parents? Yeah, they belong to my dad. Uh, from what I've seen of them, they're 1960s. Maybe 70s, some of them, a bit later, but uh, how many have you got all together? Um, about many... 13 boxes. 13 boxes, yeah. yeah. And then some loose so there's, there's ones. a lot. There's some jolly mm. interesting ones here as well. At first glance, the good thing about them, they got original boxes. Slight downside of it is they have been used. Yeah. And you probably hear a lot about dinky toys, car corgis, matchboxes, making serious money, some models. A mint and boxed. Yeah. Any, any particular favourites that we've got on the table here of yours? Um, I like like the blue one and then the yeah, red one. Yeah, I like ones. that one yeah. too. Yes. And in fact, this one I don't recognise this one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to pick this one up, I think. But it's actually got a a lorry, and that will appeal to the to the lorry enthusiasts as mm -hmm. well as people just like the toys. So, yeah. Brick Company, London Brick Company Limited. Good good looking thing that mm. one. You bought them here to sell them, mm -hmm. towards the new kitchen. I think I'd rather have these in a the new kitchen, personally, <laughs> so I'm going to have a go at buying them. Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Now, we all know that's not enough. 20, 140, 160, 180, 200. Shall I put more down? 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. 320, 340. No excitement over there yet, <laughs> by the look of it. Oops. Don't get too excited yet, because what people can't see at home is that is a small selection. Believe you me, it's mind-blowing. There are two large boxes full of goods. I think this is something which is difficult to assess without looking individually at every piece. Three to five hundred pounds is the estimation. And the Duke is saying to you, I think it's over five hundred pounds. I think it could be six. And it would not surprise me if it's more. My advice is, unless you get up to six hundred pounds, get off to the auction, get gambling. I think this is a hot lot. <laughs> what can I say after that? Right? It's really shot me out the window, hasn't it? <laughs> I can go a bit higher if you like, but if you're going to stick at six that David's recommended, then it's really off to auction for you. So it's off to auction. Yeah, yeah. It's off to auction, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well done, and, Thank and you. Uh, all the best at auction. Thank you. Thank all you very much. Thank Cheers. You. The massive collection of dinky toys has rocked up to the cell room, but without their drivers. Andrea and Gavin brought along a real mixed lot of dinky toys. Quite a lot of them were boxed. They weren't all mint, but they were in nice condition. Of course, they've been used and they've been played with. They're here in the sale room. They can't make it today, Gavin and Andrea, so I am looking after their interests. We've spread them up into six lots, 
to try and maximise the selling potential. The first lot is coming up now. The reserve is 150 quid. Is it going to make it? Let's find out. On to the dinkies for you this time, Dan. A nice lot for you here. Uh, we're starting 141A. And with commissions, I start at £150. Straight in at 150. That's blown away the reserve. Commissions are out at 170, 180, 190, 200, 200 bid, 210, 220. This hands everywhere. 230, 240, 250. On my left at 250, a bit at 250, got a 250, a bit at 260, fresh bid. Another bid there, 260. At the back at 260, a bit at 260, got a 260, a bit at 260, got a 260. At the back, out left, sir, 260, I down at 260. Okay, Gallo's gone down. First lot, 260 pounds. We're going in for this next lot. There's a reserve of 100 quid on this. Three commissions, and I start at 280 pounds. 290. 290, new we bidder in the room. Sir. You can have 10 if you like, 310, 320. Someone say 20. At 320, Shay, 320, fresh bidder at 320. I sell this time then at 320. Okay, 320 pounds. Well, that already is 580 quid. Straight away, that's the first two lots. Next one in, there's a reserve of 120 quid on that. 230 and bid at 230. At 230, at 230, who wants 10 more here? 240, 250. At 260, at 270. 280, commissions are out, 280 in the room. 280. Anybody else want a bid here? I sell away, done then at 200. And 80, number 66, sir, thank you. 860 quid so far. Blimey. Three commissions, I start at 80 pounds. 5, 90, 5, 100, and 10, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. On the commission, 170, 180, 190, 200. 200 on commission, 200 pound, 210, 220, 230, 240, Amazing, isn't it? 250, 260. On my left at 260, all out this side at 260. At 260. I made that 1120 quid. So far. 120 bit at 120, got a 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190 in the room, commissions are out, 190 in the room. Do anybody else want a bid here? I sell away done then at 100 and 90. 66, sir, thank you very much. I make the total so far £1,310. And this sounds like the last lot. Eight, 50, 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 5, 85 pound, 85 pound, all out this way. I sell away, done then, at 85. 264, thank you very much. I've got Andrea on the telephone. A few seconds ago, we have just sold the collection of dinky toys. She's not aware yet what they brought, and so I'm going to speak to her on the telephone. Andrea, are you there? I am, yeah. OK. You turned down 400 quid, it was the right decision and we were able to get, in total today, before the deduction of commission, £1,395. <laughs> we have some commission to take off, and that leaves you with £1,255. Do I hear a screech, a, a squeal of delight down the phone? <laughs> OK. What are you going to do? It's a bit early yet, but 1,255 quid, girl. What are you going to do with all that money? Is it a Ibiza? Is it a holiday? Is it expensive shoes or handbags? Is it jewellery? Come on, what are you going to do? A new kitchen. A new kitchen? In house, yeah. OK, so sensible, not frivolous. It's going towards a new kitchen. Can I ask you, are you delighted or are you pleased with the result? I'm that was the real deal. Andrea's happy. What a cracking result. Dinky Toys, big money. Have our dealers turned a profit today? Alison couldn't make anything because she sent everything to auction. And Corey did make a profit on those cups, scrapping them for £340, and the Roman bottle went for £220. Stuart's fishing float hasn't floated anyone's boat and remains unsold. Henry has no takers for the pewter jug, but he sold the silver basket for 210. Still not as big as the £149 profit Vera made when she sold it to him in the first place. <laughs>